Father, we come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in these needed times. We thank you for all that has been said and done in this place. And we pray that it all has been to lift you up and to edify these your people. Forgive us now all of our sins and all of our shortcomings. You say your word that if a man say he has no sin, that man is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But if we're willing to confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Give us preaching grace in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, give us power that we may be able to convey to these your people that that we have heard from heaven. These and all blessings we ask in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Those that have your Bibles, if you'd be so kind to turn to Genesis chapter 46. Beginning with verse 1. And while you're turning, we certainly give all praises and adorations to our Heavenly Father. And we thank Him today that things are as well as they are in our lives. We say that because I have discovered that things don't have to be as well as they are. So oftentimes, in greeting people, I ask them, how's everything going? And some say, it could be better. And I always come back and say, it could be worse, too. <laughs> Amen. Uh, giving respect to our ministers on the Roscom and to all of you that make up this wish of setting. From the book of Genesis, chapter 46, beginning with verse 1. And you'll find these words. I'm reading from my American Standard King James Version, so if yours not, it may be uh, read a little different. And there you'll find these words. So Israel set out with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac, and God spoke to Israel in visions of night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt. For I will make you a great nation there. And I will go down with you to Egypt. And I will all so surely bring you up again. And Joseph will close your eyes. And then Jacob arose from a shield, and the sons of Israel carried their father Jacob and their little ones and their wives in the wagon which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. We're going to stop right there. May the Lord bless the reading of this word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, last week we preached from chapter 42 and 43. And we talked about what is it that's hindering my turnaround. Today, today, we want a useful subject, making sure one is doing God's will. Amen. Making sure and even after Friday, after the Supreme Court ruling, uh, yeah, we need to make sure 
doesn't matter who you are, what position you hold, that you are doing God's will. We're going to begin with a story here. You need to try to understand what I'm trying to convey this morning. Direction, this, this uh, direction. And this story is in town, Rome Way, Regal. Instinct without direction. Roy Regal was a linebacker for the University of Chicago in 1929 when he, when they went up against Georgia Tech at the Rose Bowl. The game was scoreless when he picked up a phone from the other team and headed for the end zone, the wrong end zone. A teammate chased him, tackled him with one yard to go. But on the next play, Rago's quarterback got sacked in the end zone for a two-point safety. When the game was over, his team had lost by one point. Thus, Roy Reagan has been known ever after as Ron Wade Reagan. Reagan later said that he heard his teammate behind him yelling, you're going the wrong way, but thought, what's wrong with him? One author said of Ray Gale, he has instinct without direction. And we're all like that. Sometimes we have the right instincts, but we go in the wrong direction. And going in the wrong direction can be dangerous. So when we look here at the text this morning, if you just pray with me, a series of things had happened. Jacob is God's chosen one to bring the Messiah, the long way Messiah through the lineage of Jacob. <coughs> Jacob is the grandson of Abraham, and Isaac was the son of Abraham, and Isaac was Jacob's father. As I shared on last week, uh, Jacob had got off track. <coughs> he had made an hour out of his baby boy, Benjamin, after he thought that he would see, never see Joseph, anymore. Matter of fact, he told him he was dead. And he was bitter. And because he had favoritism, it disrupted the whole family. And this family was in chaos. Uh, the dad didn't forgive, neither had he forgotten what they had done or what had happened to Jacob, or to Joseph. And then the brothers for over 20 years have carried that guilt and lie that they thought that maybe had been killed by a wild animal. But God turned it around and he used Phantom to get Joseph back on track because when the father get off track, the whole family is off track. And so he's back on track now. Um, and what he thought was working against him, God was able to turn it around. He thought that uh, Joseph was dead. He thought that he might not ever see Simeon again. And now they had, he had to send Benjamin on down to Egypt. But he looked up and here all ten of his sons and all these wagons. And good news that he was not expected, that his son, Joseph, whom he thought was dead, was now alive. 
And he was just blown away at the news. And so we see in 45, he says, it's enough that my son Joseph is still alive. I will go down and see him before I die. And so it's, it's several things we want to pull out of this text. And y'all pray with me here. We're going to move on. The first thing that we see is Jacob's raw invitation. Are y'all going to pray with me? We see a raw invitation. Well, you said, well, Pastor Thomas, where do you see that? You've got to read what comes before chapter 46. If you look at chapter 45, there in verse 17, after Joseph said to Pharaoh that those was his brothers and that his father was still alive, he gave through Joseph a royal invitation for them to go down with wagons and move their father, Jacob, to Egypt. So we see a, a royal invitation. And somebody might say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, I want you to know this before we move on. The greatest thing in the world is doing God's will. Why? Because the greatest possession in all the world are given to those who really do God's will. And although Jacob had received this raw invitation, we see here that he was troubled. And although he packed up and loaded up all of his stuff, when we look at verse uh, 1 of uh, chapter 46. As I read, so Israel set out with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifice to the God of his father. Can I just stop there? To tell you that Jacob was troubled. He was troubled because he just wanted to make sure that he was not following human wisdom. There was a famine in the land, and, and uh, God had sent his son ahead to make provisions, not only to save Egypt, but also uh, the chosen people of God. And so we see here, my second point is that Jacob needed God's reassurance. Well, the Bible tells us, and Philippians 4 and 6, be anxious for nothing but all things by prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known unto God. He was happy, he was excited, but yet now, as I shared with you, he's back on track and he's back in fellowship with God. And, 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 and the good thing about it, when we look at the rest of this story, he, when he uh, was able to get back on track, the rest of his family was on track, and for the first time, they are a family uh, in fellowship with one another, loving each other. And so here, Jacob needed some, he needed God's reassurance. And uh, it's amazing now, I, I want you to know that Egypt was about 250 miles from where uh, they was located there in Canaan. And it would have took them quite some time to get there. And verse 1 says, so Israel set out with all that he had and came to their ship and offered sacrifice to God. Jacob needed God's reassurance. Well, I want you to know that Egypt was due west. And Beersheba was southwest. And before he could go west, he had to first go south to worship. Are y'all going to pray with me? He went to Beersheba. That, that, that's where he grew up. That's where his father lived. That, that was his hometown. That, that's where his father had worship. Amen. And, and this was Jacob's favorite worship place. 
He went 25 miles to worship. Can I just can I just stop there a minute to tell you that worship is not always convenient? And with all the livestock and all the wagons and all the stuff that they had, this meant this was a two-day journey just to worship. Yeah. I wish y'all would pray with me. Oh, yeah. And, and, and he, he, he went first to Bathsheba because he needed to worship. Yeah. We see Jacob raw invitation and then we see Jacob needed God's reassurance. He needed God's reassurance because in a time that you went to Egypt, Egypt was a type of the world, a going into the world. And God had, uh, God had commanded his father. You know, his father had went to Egypt and got in trouble there. And Abraham went there and he got in trouble. And so, although Jacob has received word that his son is alive, he's a little conscious because he don't want to be out of God's will. He don't want to be out of God's will. And so here, uh, he needed God's reassurance. Amen. Let's move, move on. My third point is that God reiterated to him the promises, but before God reiterated the promise, look at what he says. He says, I am. God spoke to Israel in a vision of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he says, here I am. He said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you a great nation there. And I will go down with you to Egypt. And I will also surely bring you up again, and Joseph will close your house. Well, let's look at this. First of all, God identifies himself. He says, I am the God of your father. And really he's saying here that, 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 that I am the strong one. I am the mighty one who have the power to do all things. You can trust both the word and the power. Then he says to Jacob, do not be afraid. I, I know that there is some anxiety. I see that you are concerned about going to Egypt. He says, but don't be afraid to go. He says, for I will make you a great nation there. So this is a prophetic statement. This is something that God is, is speaking to Jacob and it represents that God is going to bless them there. Now it's amazing for 200 years Abraham, his grandfather and his father had been in the promised land and up until this point there was only 70 descendants. 200 years. Isn't it amazing God don't move in our time? Are y'all going to pray with me? And so here God says, don't be afraid. Go on down. Go on down. In other words, I'll be with you. This is where Jacob was, was cautious. He was, he was concerned whether or not this was God's will. Now, he says, I'm going to make you a great nation then. In other words, I'm going to fulfill the promise that I made to Abraham. I, I promised Abraham that through his seed, through his law, that I would bless him and make him a great nation. And so God reaffirms to Jacob that he's going to fulfill that promise. And notice what he says. He says, I will go down with you to Egypt. Now, when he says, I'll go down with you, this means more than I'm just going to accomplish you, keep you company. 
He says, I will go down with you. That means that I'm going to go with you and I'm going to protect you. Oh, yes. And I'm going to guide you. Oh, yes. Amen. He says, not only that, but I, I will surely bring you up again. Again, this is prophetic. He's not going to necessarily bring Jacob up, but he will bring the descendants of Jacob back to the promised land. Now, not only that, but he says, Joseph is going to close your eyes. In other words, you're going to die in Egypt. Oh, yes. And I don't know whether you've been around very many people that die, but very few people die and close their own eyes. Mostly, someone has to close their eyes. And so this is what God is doing. He's reaffirming, amen, to Jacob that it's all right to go. Now, you just can't figure out God. He chastised Abraham. And then he chastised his father Isaac. And now he tells Jacob to go on down to Egypt. You just can't figure God out sometimes. But one thing that when you can't figure him out, you got to learn how to trust him. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Amen. Make sure you're doing God's will. I don't know who you are today, but I believe God sent you by because you're getting ready to make a major decision. And God is teaching us in this passage before you make any major decision, you need to go with him. Yeah. You, you need to talk it over with God and make sure that this is God's will. Because everything that comes your way don't necessarily mean that it's of God. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. Amen. And so we see, we see, we see that God uh, relieved, that's my next point, God relieved and released Jacob from his fears. He, he wasn't troubled no more. He, he wasn't worried. Let me tell you why he was worried. See, Egypt is a type of the world and, and, and Jacob knew that his household was saved. He was concerned about his children, his grandchildren, that the world didn't pull them away from God. Hello. Hello. He, he was concerned that, that they would not pattern their lives become conformed with the society around him. And so he was struggling, he was worried about it because he believed that God was gonna send his son through his sons. And, and oh, that, yes. that son was Jewish. Oh, yes. Now, as we move on, as we move on, the story says that they went on down to Egypt. And notice what verse 5 says. It says, Then Jacob arose from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried their father Jacob and their little ones and their wives in the way. In other words, God gave him peace. Oh, yeah. Amen. When you get ready to make a major decision and you, 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 you're not at peace, yeah. you, you ought to go wish him. Yeah. You, you ought to fast and pray. You ought to make sure that God is giving you directions and he's guiding your every step. Matter of fact, the Bible said that the, that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. And although Jacob had received this divine invitation from the king himself, he had to get it clear with God. Yes. Lord have mercy. Is there anybody here tired of making the wrong decision? Is anybody here like me made too many bad decisions yes. without concerning God? Is there anybody here today tired of turning around at dead end streets? Because God just sent me by to tell you that you need to learn how to go by Bashir. You need to learn to worship, and worship is not always convenient. Amen. Amen. Somebody's here today, and you got plenty to do, but I'll tell you, worship is not always convenient. Let me move on. And so we see him, he get to, he get to, he get to, he get to Egypt. Get to Egypt. He get there, and, and he's there. And and uh, and they sent sent Judah uh, to let him know that they was close. And you see that there in verse twenty eight. And so not only that they are there. And so Joseph he comes and he embraces his father. He hadn't seen his dad in twenty three years. Uh, what what a reunion here when you look at this. He's kissing his dad. His dad is hugging and kissing him. And uh, 
They're so glad to see each other. And, and Joseph, uh, uh, Jacob said there in verse 30, now let me die since I've seen your face. That you're still alive. You know, uh, at least I get happy here and I tell you, but you know, uh, Jacob lived 17 years in Egypt. And so what happened here, uh, Joseph began to kind of, you know, prepare them for Pharaoh. And he says, now when Pharaoh, you know, asks you, uh, what is your occupation? You know, you make sure you tell him that, that, that you, you know, you're a shepherd and your father before you was a shepherd. And, and because the, 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 uh, the Egyptian really didn't like shepherds. Yeah. They, 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 they didn't like them. You know, they, they was a, uh, you know, it was a despicable thing to be a shepherd. But, but, but you know what God done? God gave Jacob favor. Gave him favor. You know, when you, when you make sure that you are doing God's will, guess what God will do in your life? He'll give you favor. Let, let me help you here. Let me help you here. So, so he went on down, he prepared to meet Pharaoh, and, and I don't have time to go through every verse, and, and, and uh, so when you get there to, uh, to uh, verse 7, it says, Then Joseph brought his father and presented him to Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed him. Lord Hammers, I wish y'all would get this. Now here Pharaoh is, he's the most important man in all the world at this time. And here Jacob is, he is a descendant of Abraham, but he is, a, he is one of God's chosen men. Amen. He has the light of the world in him and in his people. And guess what? When he got down to Pharaoh, he's there because he's hungry. He's there because the, the famine had affected the promised land. But when he got to Pharaoh, he blessed Pharaoh. Amen. He, he is, as far as the world was concerned, Jacob was a nobody. But as far as God was concerned, Jacob was the most important man on earth. Not Pharaoh. And so he blessed Pharaoh. And, 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 and he said, and the Pharaoh's, Pharaoh said to, to, to Jacob, says, says how, how, how old are you? How, how many years have you, have you lived? He says, I lived 130 years. 130 years. And, and they be food. In other words, uh, he goes on to explain this. And he says, 130 years, and they've been unpleasant years. In other words, he said, I've had some good days, and I've had some hills to climb. Uh, are y'all with me here? He said, I haven't been easy. He says here, uh, when I look at my few years and compare them to the years that my father lived, he lived to be 180 years. Isaac did. And Abraham lived to be 175 years. Notice here, he says, they've been unpleasant. Is anybody in here can relate to that? Have everything gone well with you all of your life? Have you ever had any trials, any mountains that seem to be impossible? In the rivers that seem to be uncrossable, I just come by to tell you that, that Jacob said, you're not alone. Oh, Lord, Lord have mercy. He says here, he says, he says, during my years, he says, I, I've been here 130 years and I've just been a soldier. Don't, don't own very much. Just moving from place to place. Amen. Just, just a soldier. And here he's standing before a man who's over all Egypt. He said, I'm just a soldier. You know, some of us were alive and said, you know, trying to build up ourselves. Yeah. Jacob just told the truth because all of his life for 130 years, the, the thing that was so dear to him was the promises of God. God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a great nation. And so all of his life, he held on to that. I just want to say about holding on to the promises of God today. He held on to that. 
And it didn't seem like he was accumulating a lot. He had a little bit. But, but here he says, he says here, he says, I'm just a soldier. In other words, this world is not my home. Oh. Amen. I, I, I just want to make sure you understand here. I don't care how comfortable you are today. Amen. Whether you know it or not, we are strangers and we are just passing through. This world is not our home. Sooner or later, we're going to have to destroy what this earth is done. And then notice here. Notice here in the text. And Jacob blessed him again. He blessed Pharaoh. Mm. Pharaoh didn't ask nothing else. And he went out from his presence. That, that's amazing. I, I can imagine that when, when Jacob stood before Pharaoh, a thousand thoughts went through his mind. And then here, it was this Pharaoh that God used to elevate his son. And Jacob was, Jacob's son Joseph became one of the greatest men in Egypt next to Pharaoh. But he blessed Pharaoh. And it seemed like when we look at this text that the lesson is blessing the greater. But I come by to tell you that the greater is blessing the lesser. Can I get a witness? Say that here, Joseph Selma, his father and his brothers in the land of Egypt. In other words, he explained to his dad that he was a shepherd and they had all this livestock, so therefore they needed some land. You know that whatever we need, God got it. And Pharaoh had all of this choice land and we're doing nothing with it. Lord have mercy. Oh, yes. And so Joseph had coached him, you know, to ask for Goshen. And that's why they sell. And, and another reason that, 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 that this was done because uh, Jacob wanted to be separated from Egypt. You know, uh, uh -huh. the Bible tells us to come yes. out among from among the world. You know, some of us are too close with worldly folk. He said, be separated from them. And so Goshen was all by himself. And notice this, although Pharaoh despised shepherd, he said, well, since y'all are expert at shepherding, I got a little livestock of my own. Maybe you can, you can help me out. Maybe you can take care of my livestock. Look at God giving him favor. God can fix this thing. If you seek God's direction and everything and make sure what you're doing is the will of God, I'll tell you that God will give you favor. Yes. Not only did Pharaoh give them land, but Pharaoh put them over his livestock. Yeah. Lord, Lord have mercy. But let me move on. Amen. We got to make sure that we're doing God's will. Can I tell you what happened? Yeah. The family got worse. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. It lasted seven years. Yeah. The Bible says, Amen, in verse 13, and there was no food in the land. Yes, because the famine was very severe. Yes, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished because of the famine. Notice here it says, Joseph gathered all the money that was found in the land of Egypt. And what God is trying to tell us that it doesn't matter how many dollars you have, the money can only go so far. And uh, the people were so hungry, they kept on returning until their money ran out. Mm -hmm. After their money ran out, the Bible said they looked around at their livestock yeah. and said, what good is livestock when there's no food? Uh -huh. And the Bible said they sold their livestock. 
Yeah. To Joseph. Uh -huh. Who bought it for Pharaoh. Uh -huh. Y'all just bear with me just one minute. I want to show you. How God gave Jacob faith. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. And all over Israel, people were selling their livestock. And uh, when all the livestock was sold, amen, they came back and said, well, we're still hungry. And uh, all of our money is gone. And our livestock, our herds, and our donkeys are gone. And uh, we was wondering if we could sell ourselves to you as servant that we could eat. And uh, the Bible says that they sold themselves. And they had to give Pharaoh one pill when the famine was over. Oh, look at God. Amen. So Pharaoh had all the money. And he had all the livestock. And he had all the people. But down in Goshen, everything was all right in Goshen. Amen. They was able to hold on to the little money they had. They was able to hold on to the livestock. And then instead of them losing, God began to multiply. I tell you, you need to make sure that you are in the will of God. Because God will give you faith. Can we get a witness? Yes, yes, God will give you favor. God blessed Egypt because of the house of Jacob. And uh, the Bible says, the Bible says that after a while they began to multiply. And I come out and tell you after a period of time, there was from 70 people, there was over 2 million folk. God kept his promise. He said, I will bless you there. Well, I just come out and tell you that you better hold on if God ever promised you anything. Because it will come to pass. It might not come when you want it to, but it will come to pass. Can I get a witness? And uh, the other thing here, I gotta jump here, he says, and Joseph will close your eyes. <laughs> And after 17 years, the Bible says one day that Jacob sent word to Joseph. I want you to come on down here. I'm not doing very well. And uh, the Bible says uh, uh, Joseph went down and took his two boys with him. Ephraim and Manasseh. And uh, the story goes that he blessed them. And they became the most important tribe of all the tribe. And uh, not only did he bless a man Joseph's son, but he blessed all of his sons. And after he blessed them, you know, the Bible says he he leaned on his staff. <laughs> God have mercy. While, 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 while he was dying, he, he, he got strength and got up and leaned on his staff and bless him. And then everything that he predicted came true. And the Bible says after he blessed them, guess what he done? He closed. He laid down and he died. And Jacob took his hand and closed his father's eyes. Can I get a witness? Well, let me tell you. Jacob got his confirmation that it was all right to go to Egypt. You're going to die there. But uh, before we die, he told Joseph, I want you to promise me. Amen. I want you to promise me that you won't bury me here in Egypt. And uh, he made a promise. And uh, when they, when
When he died, the Bible says that uh, they had a big funeral procession. And he honored his father's request. He took his father back to the land of Canaan. And they buried him. Amen. What that tells us is that, that when God makes a promise, amen, he will fulfill his promise. We know that it took 400 years when they were down there in Egypt. Amen. But God says, after 400 years, God remembered the promise. He came down and used Moses to lead them out. And all I'm saying today is that you better make sure, amen, that you're doing God's will. I believe that there's somebody here this morning getting ready to make a major decision, amen, and God to serve me to tell you that it's important to make sure that it's all right with God. Lord have mercy. I, I, I got to close here now. I don't know about you, but I made some bad decisions in my life. But I thank God that I'm like Jacob now. I've come to a place, amen, when I'm hesitant to move. Lord have mercy. Amen. I, I, I've learned that it's better to pray about things. And every now and then fast before you jump up and make an irrational decision. Is it anybody here understand what I'm trying to say today? Amen. God wants us. He wants us to consult him. Lord have mercy. He wants to guide us. He wants to direct us. And I like this. And I'm done. I'm done here. But I come by to tell you that God knows how to give you faith. He knows how to give you faith. I don't care what you're going through right now. I don't, I don't care how much you're making. It might not be enough. But I come by to tell you that God can bless it. He can bless it. He can take care of it. He can, he can make I remember when I was a little boy and my dad had left us. And I can remember my mother worked for eleven dollars a week. And we just barely made it. And I can remember days when my mother would cry and, and look up towards him and say, The Lord will make a way. Some way. And you know what God done? He made a way. He made a way. He made a way. All you gotta do is make sure that you in his will. He'll make a way. He'll make a way. Let me tell you, he made a way for me because 2,000 years ago, he sent his son into the world, came down through 42 generations. And one Friday afternoon, one, one Friday afternoon, one Friday afternoon, they, one, one Friday morning, they put him on that cross. They nailed his hand. They nailed his feet. And, 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 and they put him in that cross in the hole and, and, and he stayed there all Friday night. And all day Saturday, all night Saturday night, but early Sunday morning, yes. he got up with all power yes. in his hand. All power, the same God yeah. that, that, that met Jacob in the dream, the, the same God that revealed himself to Jacob in the dream. And do you know what? That was the last time that God revealed himself to Jacob in a vision according to the book of Genesis when he stopped by. Receive. But I come out of day to tell you that early Sunday morning, Jesus got up from that cross. He got up. He got up from that grave. He got up with all power in his hand. All power. All power in his hand. And he's coming back. And God tells us that in all of our ways, Proverbs 5, acknowledge him. And he will direct our path. In all of our ways, he'll direct us. God will give us faith. That's it today. That's it. He was troubled. He was confused. But God reassured him. Go on down. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. Lord have mercy. I can remember my mother said, boy, I'm not going to worry about you no more. I'm going to put you in the hands of the Lord. And when I look back over my life, you know what I see? That God has been with me. He's been with me. He has kept me. And he's made a way out of nowhere. 